adversity is, is, is part of life. It's how we learn. It's how we develop as individuals. Have we achieved equality in sport? And if not, what more needs to be done? I think we have come such a long way. We, you know, when I think about when I won in 92, I was sort of like the only woman out of, you know, the five of us that won. And, um, and I had to win to get that recognition. Um, you know, certainly wasn't the pay was nowhere near the other guys that were involved in my sport. But to see where women's sport has come over the last, you know, 30 years, um, I think it's not just about um, equality around money. I think, you know, yes, there are some sports that are equal and, and yes, you can improve it. But I think it's about media and I think it's about coverage because this isn't just about the top end, which is the, is the money side of it. It's about the progress that women can have and the confidence and the programs that are in place to bring them through. And that comes down to media coverage, that comes down to merchandise and you know sponsorship all those sorts of things and that to me is what's really important and yes we're getting there but we're still a little way off and, and I think we just need to keep doing what we're doing uh, and have you know amazing role role models like Emma Randacano with the tennis this weekend unbelievable and, and that is what women's sport need. Why is it important to encourage female participation in sport? It's enormously important. Um, and, and to me, it's much more around the confidence and the self-esteem. And I think there's been lots of reports out there of just, you know, girls that are active from a young age, just how much more they are confident in themselves, how they are mentally stronger, um, and just, yeah, just the effect they can have and, and um, within you, just your own self-esteem and how you feel about yourself. So can you describe a time in your sporting career where you overcame adversity? Yeah, adversity is, is, is part of life. It's how we learn. It's how we develop as individuals. And I know if I would not have been that athlete um, to have stood on that line in Barcelona, unless I hadn't, you know, had injuries, I hadn't uh, lost races, I was ill, all those sorts of things. And it was about how you put it behind you, you learn the lessons and you move on and you don't dwell on it for the next six months and, and go the if only. Um, and it was part of it and it made me stronger. Um, it made me hungrier, it made me more determined. And they're all the skills that you need to, to, to perform at that high level. So while you were competing, how did you ensure your mental well-being? My mental well-being was, was really important um you know more so uh, you know now as then and, and i think it's around recovery it's about training smart um because you know you could train and work every hour of the day but you know you, your quality of that training would go down and because you're not putting in the recovery you're not repairing the body you're not sleeping you know you're not having your me time yet you know you sit down and a, and a cup of coffee or whatever or a walk outside and, and they're really crucial and um, and that was all part of the strategy that was all part of planning of my day was you know where does that recovery come in and that's around the well-being and that's how you keep your mind strong that's how um, yeah you stay positive within yourself and, and kind to yourself really. And then how can business leaders apply your approach to well-being to their own workplace? I think business leaders have to lead by example. Um, they need to be the ones that get away from their desk at lunchtime. They're the ones that maybe go to sports day to watch their kids. Um, you know, yes, they've got good work ethics, but it's fine to, to, you know, to sit down and have five minutes away or to leave early from work and make up the time later. And um, I think they need, they need to recognize how important um, you know, well-being is and to have a good program in place that, that supports their their team and um, allows them to, you know, because you are asking, so many leaders are asking so much of their staff, you know, time and time again, that, they, you know, they've set the goals, they've set the challenges and they've achieved that and they're going again. And that's about recovery and that's about, you know, supporting each other, chatting, communicating, 
um, having some fun time together. I think that's the other thing. You know, if I think back to my, you know, training days, you know, my coach would often vary the training that we do or we'll have a social event like go bowling or whatever, a meal. And I think that's really key. And that opens up and understands who each other is and learning something about them so that we can talk if there is a problem and, um, and knowing that you're there to support each other. So how do you define peak performance, both in sport and business? Um, peak performance is very similar within sport and business. It's about getting the best out of yourself um, to be able to perform at that high level. And it's looking at every little increment, every little percentage and where you can um, improve as a person. Um, and that could be, you know, as a sports person, and uh, it's very similar, you know, it's around recovery, it's around, you know, the motivation goal setting, it's around working hard, it's about, yeah, your me time, it's about, you know, building resilience, it's all those sorts of things, and it's no difference, and it's, it's understanding that you can't leave any one thing unturned if you, if you want to perform day in, day out at that high level and ask a lot of yourself. 